ladies and the young men, and they're uh, traveling in the summer. If you are um, interested in having either the men or the ladies, uh, they have a few spots open uh, for summer tour. Uh, they may or may not be in your region or close enough to come, but if you're interested, you ought to uh, ask them. And uh, a lot of folks put on uh, extra youth rallies uh, on an off night. And uh, then, of course, uh, they travel for several weeks. Uh, Dr. Winehouse takes the uh, young men, and uh, Dr. and Mrs. Jorgensen travel with the young ladies. I look forward to hearing them sing, and then I'll come back and introduce the preacher for the final hour. Our uh, next speaker, Brother William Davis, he was saved through the bus ministry uh, as a teenager. He um, had a scholarship to attend a secular college and had uh, uh, quite a uh, career opportunity ahead of him. And, but he came to Bible college and uh, God called him to preach and he graduated from Commonwealth Baptist College. He served as a pastor for a couple of years and then he came back to work here uh, at our church. He is our uh, financial manager for all of the ministries here. Uh, he is our youth pastor, and uh, what I like about him is the fact that he's 100% fundamentalist. He's not being led by the young people. He's leading the young people 
uh, to have a walk with God and to serve God. A great soul winning group uh, reaches uh, and uh, works with not only our young people here at our church, but our uh, our young people that ride buses and uh, attend our church. And so I'm glad uh, Brother Davis is uh, here to preach this morning. And I want you to welcome Brother Davis as he comes. All right. All right, all right, Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 4, Nehemiah chapter 4, and, uh, and I'm excited to, uh, to preach, I'm excited about the conference, and uh, I'm excited that you're here. I appreciate you uh, uh, seeing uh, the forecast and seeing uh, everything and, and still coming, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you trusting our church and our college and our conference with your young people and uh, and I, I mean that. I'm glad that you're here, and uh, and I uh, I want to say that um, uh, everything that was here or that's here. Um, there's a lot of uh, folks that uh, that uh, aren't up here. They they're not preaching and uh, and they're not uh, seen. But uh, but they painted these boxes and they hung these posters and they cooked your food uh, and they'll uh, they'll fold those t-shirts. And uh, and they made phone calls, and uh, they did a lot of work. And uh, they're like those uh, those folks that built those gates, those names that you read over in chapter three of Nehemiah. And uh, and everybody knew Nehemiah, but uh, but uh, you know a lot of people don't know who those people are. But uh, but I'm thankful for them. And uh, won't you give them a hand? That's the we that he's talking about in uh, Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse number 6. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse number 6. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse number 6. The Bible says this, So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together under the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. That's the people he's talking about. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the, Arab- and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, that they were very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Verse number 10, our key verse tonight, and that's what we'll focus on. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. You see, in verse number 10, something happens. Nehemiah had left his position, as we talked about last night in the skit, uh, as cupbearer to the king for a purpose in God's kingdom. Having been away a long time, he gathers materials, gets to the city, and goes to work. The people are fired up. And, and the city goes to work on the wall. And though the enemy is fighting, the wall is beginning to be formed until one day the people of God hit a snag. Something begins to stop them from building the wall. Something actually comes between them and what God wanted them to do. But if you look at the Scriptures, it's not a lack of materials. They had everything they needed. It wasn't a lack of workers. If you read chapter 3, they had a bunch of people. It wasn't a lack of desire. The people had a mind to work. It wasn't a stoppage of service. They were there and ready. The people who were once excited and unified with a mind to work now find themselves unable to do what God wants them to do because verse 10 says this, There is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. You see, there was so much burnt gates and broken walls. The Bible says in verse 2 that there was heaps of rubbish. This would be rubble and debris from the destruction of the city. This would be scrap and waste and refuse 
that had polluted the streets. You see, there was a gate in chapter 3 called the Dung Gate. This is where the trash would be thrown. This is where their, their waste would be taken. And you see, with this gate gone, there, would, there probably would be some people who wouldn't go all the way to the gate to dispose of their waste. They would just throw it in the streets because the streets were already polluted. And the people now were separated from where they needed to be. They were saying, look, it is so bad that we can't even build the wall. The wall can't go back where it was because there's so much rubbish. There's so much junk. There's so much waste. There's so much rubble. There's so much stuff that doesn't belong. So much scrap. So much, so much refuse. So much pollution. So much debris. We can't get to the wall, to the place, to the thing that God has for us in our life. I'm afraid there's many young people that same way this morning. You're saved. I believe a lot of you have a desire to serve God. You love the Lord. You get fired up from time to time. You go through that whole uh, uh, teenager uh, uh, roller coaster, you know. Youth conference. Camp, youth rally, in trouble because you got caught, right? Maybe you make a decision, two weeks later, and we just can't understand why we can't stay on the wall. You can't figure out what's keeping you from doing what God wants you to do. I've made the statement many times when I've preached that when I was 17 years old, I realized that it was my music that was, that was keeping me from doing what God wanted me to do. And many people don't understand that because they have never had that problem or because they've never admitted that they have that problem. But at 17 years old, I realized that, got rid of it, and God changed my life. And I've, I've been on the wall since. What's keeping you from the wall? What is it that keeps pulling you back down when you climb on that will of God for your life or that, or that surrender for your life or that, or, or that walk with God for your life or that prayer time or that sweet fellowship with God and then all of a sudden you fall back down. What is that rubbish that separates you from a sweet fellowship with God? Why is it that last year at youth conference you were on that wall and surrendered, but now you're cold and not even thinking about what God called you to do? How did you decide to stop doing that certain thing last, last year at camp? I mean, you made the decision. You weren't going to do that anymore. You made that. You, you decided you were going to stop it. And now you do that and three other things like it. What happened? What changed? What is that rubbish that keeps pulling you back down? You see, teenagers don't fail the will of God. Teenagers don't lose their walk with God. Teenagers don't stop serving God because of resources. You have a church that loves you. You have, a, most of you have a, 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 a youth department. I, I, uh, you, you, you have uh, other, other teenagers, exciting activities. Uh, uh, you have people that brought you here. A lot of you go to a Christian school. Uh, uh, you have the resources. Sunday school, exciting Sunday school. Um, uh, uh, teenagers don't fail because of people. You have parents. You have a pastor. You have youth pastors. You have youth pastors' wives. You have at least a few good friends. I would even say teenagers don't fail because of trials. You see, I've seen teenagers from all walks of life on the wall. There are people in this room that I know that are serving God from all size churches. From all size youth departments. From public school, from Christian school, from home school. From saved parents, from unsaved parents, 
from, from with, with youth pastors, from no youth pastors, from lots of friends, from few friends, teenagers surrendered to Christ having lost, lost a parent to death, lost both parents to death, uh, 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 parents that have gone through divorces, having been hurt by their preacher, hurt by their youth pastor, uh, having been hurt by their parents. Teenagers here that, uh, I know teenagers that have surrendered that had disabilities, that, that had physical disabilities, that had mental disabilities. That's not the excuse. That's not the reason. But I've never known a teenager to be on the wall and stay on the wall with rubbish. Never. I've never known a teenager to stay on the wall because if you're on the wall, you're out of the rubbish. And if you're in the rubbish, you're off the wall. Look at verse 10. The Bible says there's much rubbish. What rubbish? What rubbish? What rubbish? Number one, rubbish. Rubbish in your recreation. Now, I love having fun, and we talked a little bit this morning. I talked with a few youth pastors about activities and things like that. And if you read Nehemiah, Nehemiah 6, man, they have a big feast. He's with like 150 people talking about eating a whole whole beast and everything. And I guess he killed that beast he rode into town on because it wouldn't go forward. Sometimes we let our fun get tainted by the world. And rubbish piles up. Now, y'all listen to me real good, Okay. When I was a teenager, this is how they preached. Now, you can get online and you can listen to some of them youth conferences today and they can fluff you up real good. Okay? But this is how they used to preach. I'm talking about sewage in your social media. Anybody that knows me knows you can follow me on Twitter and you can follow me on Facebook and, and you can get on there. And I believe that I believe that churches... And and uh, and places can use those things for good. They can be used for good. They're like the radio, and they're like television. We have a television program, and people get saved, people get encouraged. We live stream our services. It can be used for good. But young people, you and I both know that not everyone uses for it for that. Let's get real this morning. I'm talking about Facebook and Twitter private messages. I'm talking about your, your, your duplicate accounts that your mom don't know about and your dad don't know about. I'm talking about your following and liking rock music people. Why in the world do you need to know? Do you need to know what Justin Bieber and Lady Gaga is doing? If you're on the wall. Now, if you're playing around in the rubble, that's where they live. But don't tell me you're gonna you're on the wall following them. Lying. I'm talking about Snapchat. Listen to me real good. I'm talking to my teenagers too. There's nobody in this room, college students too. Ain't nobody in this room that has a legit reason to have a Snapchat. Why in the reason you need? To, why in the world do you need to send a message that disappears in ten seconds? Originally founded so that you can send inappropriate pictures. Some of y'all may not know what I'm talking about, you adults. But these teenagers know what I'm talking about. Because they got a bunch of them got it on their phone. And those of you those of you young people that don't know what I'm talking about, if 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 you have friends in your youth youth department or friends in your school. 
A lot of them do. And you need to tell them to take it off their phone. You say, well, Brother Davis, I don't do that. Then why you have it? Why have it? Why not send a text message? Why not send a regular text message? Why not send a regular text picture? Why do I need to send you a picture that's going to disappear in 10 seconds if it's not bad? Somebody help me. Does anybody in this room got a legit reason why my picture needs to disappear in 10 seconds if it's not bad? Somebody help me. Sewage in our social media. You're going to tell me that you ain't going to get in trouble if you know the picture you send disappears in 10 seconds? Rubbish. And you wonder why you can't get to the wall. But Brother Davis, I'm struggling. I just, I just feel so far away from... from I, I, there's just something keeping me from what God wants me to do. There's a game our teenagers play. It was, it's called Trivia Crack. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's a fun game. The entertainment section of it is, is a little worldly, but, but, but the game in itself is, is not, not necessarily bad. But let me tell you what it's become. Come, it's become a little a little dating thing. Teenagers that can't talk to other teenagers, let me tell you what they do. They instant message yeah. on trivia crack. Started out as a nice little innocent game. Now it's a chat room. You youth pastors know what a chat room is. That's what was in our day. That's what boomed the Internet. Y'all know what I'm talking about, youth pastors? <laughs> The chat room. That's what Trivia Crack has become. They get on Trivia Crack and parents are like, what are you doing? Playing Trivia Crack. No, they ain't. They're talking to boys and girls. They ain't playing Trivia Crack. How many times that thing ding? How many times you hear it ding? Like they're playing. None, because they ain't playing. They're chatting. They can't text or they ain't got a Facebook or they ain't on Twitter, but they're on Trivia Crack. And then they wonder why, I just, I just don't really, I, 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 I really don't feel spiritual. You ain't on the wall. You're playing in the rubble. You're playing over here in the rubble. You're over here in the rubble. And the rubble is keeping you from the wall. Now, let me tell you something. I've sat where you sit, and you don't, you're like me when I was you, and you don't like this preaching, but if your spirit knows that what I'm saying is right. I'm talking about silliness in our cell phones. I love my smartphone. It helps me. It helps me. It reminds me. It gives me reminders to pray. It reminds me to pray for my teenagers. I love my teenagers. I love that Kevin made a spiritual decision. He's in my youth department. I love my smartphone. But man, there's the possibility for so much rubbish on that thing. Every, every kind of music at my fingertips. Unfiltered internet at my fingertips. Apps for dating and pornography and videos. Texting where you teenagers will say things you would never say in person. Pictures that you can snap of yourself and send to anybody. Be careful. That right there will be what keeps you from the wall. Your preacher will be preaching. Your preacher will be preaching to get you on the wall. I mean the very sermon that sends you to the mission field. Yeah. 
and you miss it. You miss it in the balcony. Because that right there. You missed it while you're at college. Because that right there. And like, well, I'm just not feeling college. Maybe because you're at college in the rubble. Instead of at college on the wall. Talking about trash on your television. Man, the devil's smart. Man, we preached the devil out of them vampire movies, didn't we? So then the devil made them into little teeny bopper werewolf and vampire television shows. And y'all watch them. Y'all watch them, Teen Wolf. Dark, mystic, gothic shows, Salem and Teen Wolf. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Don't look at me. Don't look at me like a cow looking at a new gate. Y'all like, wait a second. Ain't you supposed to be preaching on Kiss and Madonna? Hey, Brother Davis is 32 years old and he does research. And I'm telling you right now, I remember when I was a a, a young man and my preacher would get up and he would preach on all them them bands and them. Uh, 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 things that wasn't involved and I'd go home my granny and say did you hear what that preacher said? I said yo granny he didn't name the people that I listened to. <laughs> and then I went to youth conference and there was this preacher that preached on everything I liked. <laughs> and I was like how did he know? He's supposed to be a preacher. (laughs) He must be God. (laughs) And I got called to preach. I'm talking about those movies you watch. I'm talking about American Idol and The Voice. Let me tell you something. Ain't no, there is no way you're on the wall watching American Idol and The Voice. There's no way. How are you going to tell me you watch all that rock music and then you go tell those little bus kids? Oh, but I tell them about Jesus and how to get saved. Okay, and then what? Then what? What after they get saved? Well, you you have a big American Idol party at your house? Help me! Help me out. Help me understand the rubbish. What do you do after they get saved? Help me understand how you live on the wall and play in the rubbish. You don't. So you either choose to play in the rubbish or live on the wall. Talking about the muck in your music. What's on your iPod? Hey, go ahead. Go ahead and take this right here. I left this thing up here all week when we was building this wall. Take it. There might be some banjo and guitar you don't like. That's between you and God, though, and we're going to have an altar call. Okay? Because string instruments in the Bible. All right? What's on your iPod? A little bit of Hoosier, Fallout Boy, Imagine Dragons, Lady Gaga, Drake. I don't care if he is a UK fan. He's wicked as the devil. Little Wayne, Eminem, and Jay-Z. Let me tell you something. Them dudes is older than dirt. Let me tell you. I ain't even got to do research on them. They was popular when I was a teenager. They need to retire. They just as wicked now as they was wicked then. And there ain't no way you can tell me that you are going to be on the wall. I'm going to be a missionary. I'm going to be a preacher's wife. Shut up. 
Hold thy peace. You're going to play in the rubble is what you're going to do. You're going to ruin a young man's life. What you going to do, young lady? That's what you're going to do. Listen to Beyonce. One direction. I got a direction for you. Come to this altar and get right with God. Maroon 5 and Taylor Swift. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what Taylor Swift is a good example of. All them musicians... Work for one person, the devil. A kingdom divided against itself can't stand. So let me tell you something. Rock and country and rap and all of it is all together. And the the, the musician that got kicked out of heaven runs the choir. Don't forget country music. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's rock music with a hat. And a twang, and a twang. Let me ask you something. Do you really think that gets you closer to the wall? Be honest with me now. Let's get real, okay? No fluff. Let's not be like, okay, now you need to serve Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Just be Jesus. And then go get in your car and listen to Eminem. That's what happens. Let's get real. How does that help you get closer to God? It don't. It don't. It's rubbish. That music is rubbish. And we know it. And it's probably keeping you from what God has for you. Number two, I got to hurry. Number two, rubbish in our relationships. I'm talking about the the filth of those foolish friends. I'm talking about that friend that's a rebel, or that friend that's worldly, or that friend that's carnal, or that friend that's cool that you always hang out with, but you know they've never once said we shouldn't do this. It's wrong. If you're always if you're always saying, Yeah, I was just with the wrong crowd, maybe you need a new crowd. Yeah. Ruth had to make that choice when she came home with Naomi, or when she was making the choice to come home with Naomi. She left her home and sister, and look what God did with her. Yeah. Talking about the potholes with your parents. Some of you got problems with your parents. You left home and, and you left fighting with your mom and dad. You left angry and bitter with your mom and dad. The Bible says he that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causes shame and bringeth reproach. You yell and fight and scream, and some of you may even hit and curse your parents. Hey, I've, I've been a wicked teenager. None of that's right. God designed you to have a healthy... Re- and then you go to church and you're like, I love Jesus. Praise God. You go to the youth pastor's wife or the pastor's wife and you're like, yeah, I just, I just want to be just like you. You go home and you're like, I hate you, Mom! Hey, that ain't right. You say, you don't know my mom. I ain't got to know your mom. She almost died giving birth to you. She puts clothes on your back. Your mom and dad put food in the refrigerator. It don't magically appear there. A bunch of y'all go to Christian school. Your mom and dad pay public school taxes and you don't even go to public school. Love them. Talk to them. Be with them. Respect them. Honor them. Obey them. Don't just get your meals, your house, your clothes, and your money and run out. That ain't a hotel. You can't tell me you're on the wall and right with God and mean and disrespectful to your parents. That's rubbish. Talking about the the, the litter with your leadership. 
Some of you got some rubbish with your youth pastor. Maybe your youth pastor left or your pastor left. Maybe your spiritual hero quit or sinned or did something he always told you not to do. And, and I'll tell you what, man, the older you get, the more that happens. The guy's changing. That's rubbish. Maybe a school teacher or the principal got on to you and it wasn't your fault. Maybe you got called out publicly or you got mistreated or maybe there's favorites in the church or the youth department. Maybe you always, somebody else gets picked for something and, uh, and, and you don't get picked. And maybe you're building up some bitterness, stacking up some rubbish. You better be careful. That's going to keep you from making a spiritual decision for God. Let me get a drink because this one's going to be rough. Talking about the debris of dating. You know what the Bible says? Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Not a girl. Not a boy. God. You know who God wants you to fall in love with? Him. He wants you to look back at your teen years and not go, I dated her and her and her and her and her. He wants you to look back and go, I made that decision, and that decision, and that decision, and that led me to her. There's going to be plenty of time for you to love your wife and for you to love your husband. The rubbish of falling in love over and over again. The rubbish of fornicating.